Greetings, my fellow freedom lovers and sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to LL3 Podcast. My name is Craig Trans, meeting from the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date is Saturday, February 25th, 2020. Yep, Valentine's Day was yesterday. I've been low-key for a while, making a living like everyone else. <laughs> Sorry for the absence, but I haven't forgotten it, all you guys out there. Yeah, and many of them talked about the horrific event, second anniversary of Parkland shootings, massacre, or Stoneman Douglas. Always got to beware of the political, politicized basis of that event. And I'm not going to really be talking about that because everyone's um, still want to put Trump with their two cents in. And don't get me wrong, it could have been prevented a long time ago. And I say that in good faith. And of course, we have we had a, even to ever talk about the impeachment. They all blame it on the Senate. Like I said before, the House made it invalid from the very beginning, so everything else is null and void. All you gotta do is read, folks. House Resolution Six Hundred and Sixty, self-explanatory. Did a show on that, by the way. A bill of attainer. Of course, Roger Stone, there's a claim, too, that Roger Stone's case, he never had a fair trial. Juries were biased, so was the judge. Like I said before, I'm not sick, I'm not here to praise Roger Stone by any means. What happened to him was unacceptable. And they shipped, the tr- they shipped this case to North Virginia. A lot of people who live in that area work for the federal government. There's going to be the stepping stone to bring in Julian Assange. All you got to do is look at the, the uh, Department of Justice website. They do have uh, charges, ready to get charges ready. They want him extradited. But based on this controversy, what was, ha- was going on, including the sentencing, it, um, you could say they got diffused or blocked. Because it still was the war on the press. Well, um, actually, I was reading this article yesterday. And I said, I'm going to take the initiative on doing this. And I said, why not? Got up. Let me just take care of this before it gets old (laughs) or outdated. But it'll be like one area, to be very frank. Keep this one pretty brief. By Paul Craig Roberts from paulcraigroberts.org, Institute for Political Economy, IPF. White people are being erased. This came out on the 13th of this year, of February. And as it reads here, white people aren't supposed to know they are being demonized by the New York Times, PBS, universities, the Democrat Party, identity politics, and corporations. And if they find out they are not allowed to protest, if they do protest, they are in even more trouble. Those Americans empowered by white privilege, who are still a demographic majority, are too scared and too intimidated to open their mouths or use their pocketbooks to protest their demonization and marginalization. Facebook and Twitter will drop them, denying them their virtual existence. Indoctrinated and mindless white friends will shun them as racist, anti-Semitic, white supremacist. 28 U.S. states will fire them if state employed and deny them contracts if their protests have anything to do with Israel. Yes, BDS, folks. Any BDS bills or laws, which is absolutely 100% unconstitutional. Rather, is it a federal or state level. I will continue on. 
Deserted and isolated on social media, their life will be over. This is what white privilege means. Throughout the Western world, truth is out of favor. Indeed, truth is objectionable. It offends identity politics, feminism, the Israel lobby, the military security complex, Monsanto Bear, the extractive industries, the pharmaceutical industry, the woke people has the, the woke people, the transgendered, and every other interest that desires to be unaccountable and free of criticism. Today it is much more important to be sensitive to woke people and the Israel lobby than it is to tell the truth. The truth has ceased to be a criteria in news, reporting, and analysis. Yes, there's no, no, no construction across the street where I'm at. <laughs> Indeed, it is increasingly dangerous to challenge official explanations if you get fired and left unemployable in the media, the educational system, and Google, the Orwellian industry to be exact. In Canada and Europe, a researcher who challenges the official Holocaust story can be in prison regardless of the objectivity of his research. The question should be, is he right or wrong? That has violated a taboo lobbied into law. Even research that reports massacres of Jews can put a researcher in prison if he doesn't support the official number of exterminated Jews and official means of extermination. If a researcher finds that 2 million Jews were machine-gunned into open trenches, but there are no gas chambers, he is toast if he publishes his findings. Alternative media websites that favored normalizing relations with Russia found themselves on a prop-or-not list, designated them to be Russian dupes or agents. Both myself and Stephen Cohen, the last honest Russian expert in American universities, are on the list of Russian agents and dupes. In other words, if a person supports normal diplomatic relations with a nuclear power capable of terminating life in the United States for eternity, this person is a Russian agent. This means that President John F. Kennedy, Richard Nixon, Jimmy Carter, and Ronald Reagan were Russian agents. What has, gone, what has gone wrong in American understanding of the world that four presidents of the United States are considered to be Russian agents? Another example of the inability of Americans to think straight is that internet sites that warn the dangers of vaccination suffer harassment and denunciation instead of an open discussion whether they are corrected. There is evidence that vaccinations cause more deaths than they prevent. This evidence should be carefully investigated and the results honestly reported. Is it still possible in the United States? To tell the truth about anything in America or anywhere in the Western world is becoming, becoming increasingly difficult and is very costly to truth tellers. Just consider the threatment of Manning and Julian Assange. Both are in prison despite the fact that neither of them should be in prison according to law. But truth tellers are no longer protected by law or by the truth. Assange in prison is in prison because Washington demands revenge for Ricky Leaf bringing the, to light Washington's war crimes. Manning is in prison because Manning will not give false testimony against Assange. A democracy governed by rule of law cannot produce these results. Therefore, we know certainly that the United States is definitely not a democracy ruled by a rule of law. So what is the United States? A tyranny that is acceptable because its propaganda produces a chauvinistic population that supports at any cost the tyrannical government as long as it ab advertises foreign threats. As America and the Western world have many lies among their foundations and historical development, indoctrinated people are hostile to truth that disproves the lies that are foundation of their belief system. People such as Americans, Canadians, and Europeans who are accustomed to a diet of lies are naturally hostile to the truth. 
my article, PBS Assaults White People, is a statement of fact, not an opinion piece. But some of the websites that are traditionally that traditionally have been eager to repost my articles are now shying away from statement of truth because of the stating the truth has risen too high. What I think it has happened that is that many Americans no longer know the difference between fact and opinion. They think everything is an opinion and the best opinion is a politically correct opinion. A factual statement that is not politically correct is not treated as a factual statement but as a politically incorrect opinion that brings denunciation of the writer. Whenever I pursue comment sections, I encounter this common confusion of truthful fact with disapproved opinion. This is now happening in universities with re professors silenced on their subject matter because the facts are politically incorrect or objectionable to feminists and people of color, few if any of whom have any comprehension of the subject matter. Can we say 1984? Damn right. According to news reports, white professors and administrators at Cambridge universities have been individually designed a person of color to monitor their speech, reading lists, lectures, and university policies for anything that would be offensive to persons of color. Yet, that white people muzzled in this way have white privilege. White black professors denounce white people as racist. Isn't this black privilege instead of white privilege? Non-white professors at Cambridge don't have a white minor to prevent their accusations of racism against whites or make certain that hatred of white people, colonialist and sort, is not featured in their reading list or in their lectures, whereas no white professors can have on its reading list Carl Polinori's book, The Homie and the Slave Trade, or John G- Jean Raspiel's Camp of Saints. As Karl Marx had been labeled an anti-Semite, although he was Jewish, this capital will soon disappear from Amazon.com and from universities' reading lists. When my website originated these, those years ago, the site designer included a comment section. What happened was that anti-Semites, or people pretending to be anti-Semites, wrote anti-Semitic comments. Other commentators accused them of trying to get the site labeled an anti-Semite website with their comments advised me to shut the comment section. As I was very critical of George W. Bush's wars and police state attacks on the Constitution, I think it was the neocons or some elements of military security complex trying to limit the influence of my website by using the comment section to cast as an anti-Semite website. My latest experience with the unreal, un, ooh, sorry about that, reliability of commentators was my review of one of David Irving's histories. The highly praised Hitler's War, I quoted Irving's statement that many Jews were massacred, but that he has never been able to find in the documentary records evidence that supports the Zionist version of the Holocaust. His position was, when he wrote the book, that there was a Holocaust of all sorts, but not to the one in the official story. So the question is, accuracy, okay? How accurate is the official story? And based on this, he didn't he, 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 um, find something different. For quoting this, which was nothing but a reporting a job, my Wikipedia biography was rewritten by someone or some persons who attributed Irving's words to me, labeled a Holocaust denier. The correction to the smear were made many times, but those determined to smear me always. Corrected the corrections. Pointing out to Wikipedia that I'm quoting Irving, not expressing my uniform views, 
on the Holocaust, a subject that I have never studied or written about, and had no effect expect that the last I looked, the bio said, as I allegedly quoted, Irving appreciately, I must agree. Appreciatively is a subject opinion and on the basis of the subjective opinion of an unknown person. I'm a labeled a Holocaust denier. This is designed to scare off readers of my website. I suppose to we Gentile whites, if we had any pride, should regard these labels as badges of honor. We should respond to these labels applied by the Israel, Israel lobby with the statement that, that statement that yes, we are all anti-Semites as long as you oppress the Palestinians, cause war, interfere in our elections, purchase special interest laws that protect you from criticism and boycotts and slander of those who tell the truth. Slander and libel are the ways in uh, the ways inconvenient truth tellers are not rid of most Americans. Are not rid of, excuse me. Most Americans have no idea what a Holocaust denier and an anti Semite are. But they know it is dangerous to be identified as one. Especially in Canada and Europe, where the, where the charge brings a prison sentence or to be associated with the person so labeled. A tiny handful of people have intimidated hundreds of millions. So how strong really are privileged white Gentiles if they can be so easily swept, swept away? Are the whites' ethnicities falling in terms of Darwin's national section? As integrity is no longer a valued virtue, in the Western media, it is not safe for a person to quote someone else, as he or she will be held accountable for a quoted person's words, words, or a post of great column, without being held responsible for the guest's words. It is certainly not safe for anyone to state a fact that woke people can misrepresent as a political, politically incorrect opinion as a brand as racism, anti-Semitism, white supremacist, sexism, homophobia, etc. Based on my experience, comment sections are good for little expect to discredit a website's writer. This is why comment sections exist on few websites that are not those used to attack Western civilization and to redefine Western civilization as diverse multiculturalism opposed by white supremacists. If you see a failure in the Tower of Babel, you are politically incorrect and worse should be denied to vote. If you stand for solid solidity of a homogeneous ethnicity, you are a white supremacist unless you are Asian, black, or Israeli with Israel apartheid state. An existence that has been denied to white ethnicities. Throughout Europe, and the UK, the ethnicities that historically defined the country are placed on the defensive by their own white governments who are forcing them to become diverse and multicultural. Can we see involuntary servitude? Absolutely. The result is that in Scandinavia, one third of females are afraid to leave their home. Entire white national ethnicities are in the process of being erased and protests against being erased is labeled racism, Nazism, supremacy, chauvinistic nationalism. In Germany and in Sweden and elsewhere in Europe, the white population continue to elect and re-elect governments that have inundated them with immigrant invaders that have multiplied the crime rate, and pushed the rape rate over 1,000%. Thank you, Club of Rome. Every Scandinavian expect these humiliations and punishments. And these Scandinavian governments seek them because they are so weak-minded that they felt guilt, even though it has been a millennium since there were Viking colonies in Russia and north of England. If the demonetization of Jews led, the holo led, of the holo led to the Holocaust, what will the demonization of white people lead to? 
Unlike feisty Jews, men mentally, emotionally weak white Gentiles overwhelmed with a false sense of guilt seem willingly to accept their extermination. We can say mind control 101, my friends. This is just an example of what Mr. Craig Roberts, Paul Craig Roberts, have to say. It's a form of um, spiritual, men physical, mental, democide, or eugenics. Suppressing people is completely unacceptable without, regardless of your ethnicity, heritage, and so forth. They've done it with the African Americans. Suppress their heritage, their names, origin names. Same thing with the Asians. The Indian Native Americans. Now they want to do it to the white Europeans. Interesting, because the whole thing is recycled garbage, my friends. And you got lobbyist groups trying to tell us how to think, how to wipe our rear ends. It's completely unacceptable. Like I said before, Ethno supremacy is tyranny, period. I'm not a privileged person. I don't have exemptions. That term white privilege is for the anyone who has used that term are just weak minded parents. That's right. Can't comprehend the bigger picture. This is why I always take the initiative to study a lot of history, even though I was a kid. Have discussions from folks, elders, even from Nigeria, talk about their their victims of tyranny. It's always to be proud of your heritage, regardless where you're from, or your ancestors are from. It's always been a dangerous world, but being guilty for what you are. Is a sla is enslavement. A number, an Uncle Tom, an Angel Mama, a house or field peasant. No one deserves it. Regardless of your race, color, creed, etc. We have to defy the Orwellian echo chamber. If not. Look, they all succumb to their game. You fight one another, and they sit there and watch. You see us get terminated, so they can rule the rest of the world. That's the bottom line, my folks. One of those areas. Always remain vigilant. Because the fact is, it will hurt you when you don't do anything at all. So, stick together or lose your identity. And that is it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you said something that's interesting I want to check out. Whatever you do, please send your correspondence with decorum. I will leave this link of Paul Craig Roberts' commentary on my speaker page. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.